Hello, everyone, and welcome to the TopCon Point Manager webinar, brought to you by TopCon Solution Stores. I am your host, Vinny Stamato. Very happy to be here with you today. I would like to start out by acknowledging how important everyone's time is, and I sincerely thank you all for joining us today for this presentation. I assure you this will be time well spent. Let's start off by introducing our presenters. As I said, I'm Vinny Stamato. I'm a software application specialist here at TopCon Solution Stores. I'm an Autodesk certified instructor, Bluebeam certified instructor. I provide software training support here at TopCon Solutions. I've worked in vertical and horizontal construction for over 25 years, and I'm really excited to demonstrate for you today TopCon's point manager software. Joining us today is Jim Martin, Director of Business Development. And after my demonstration, Jim will demonstrate point manager workflow in the field using TopCon's Magnet Enterprise. Jim. Thank you, Vinny. Yeah, I appreciate everyone joining us here for this webinar. Again, I'm Jim Martin. I'm the uh, Director of Business Development for the TopCon Solution Store. And I've been in this industry now for 25 years. I started at a uh, small surveying equipment and supply house in Kansas City. And through the years, I've really kind of uh, developed um, uh, my, my knowledge in magnet field and field layout and really kind of become a uh, TopCon Magnet Suite Specialist for the TopCon Solution Store. So Vinny, I'll turn it back over to you and uh, take us through the uh, presentation and uh, Point Manager. Great, thank you so much, Jim. All right, folks, a little bit about us. Here at TopCon Solution Stores, we are the retail division of TopCon Positioning Systems. We are a complete solutions provider for measuring and control, hardware systems, machine automation, and land surveying products along with selling the complete portfolio of TopCon products. TopCon Solutions is a platinum tier and award-winning Autodesk value-added reseller, a platinum level Bluebeam partner, and we have certified instructors and software specialists on staff. So store locations. So we have brick and mortar uh, retail stores uh, in the Pacific Northwest, in the Midwest, and throughout the Northeast. And with that, we offer state-of-the-art training with certified instructors currently offering online and in-person training, adhering to the current COVID protocols, along with unparalleled technical support and service, just a phone call away, and at our brick and mortar locations. Keep your software and hardware and equipment operating as it should and improving your bottom line. So for today's agenda, I will start out with what is TopCon Point Manager? Um, I will explain the workflows using Point Manager. I will show how to create points in AutoCAD. Uh, then Jim will lead us through taking points uh, from Magnet Enterprise, uh, placing points in the field. After placing points in the field, we can upload those points back to Magnet Enterprise and then download them back to our CAD. So this basically completes the office to field and back to office workflow for setting up your project as accurately as possibly can be done. So I've got a short little clip here I'd like to share with you all. Replace your time-consuming, labor-intensive tape measure layout procedures with TopCon's seamless layout workflow. No need to dimension drawings. Instead, create points using TopCon's Point Manager in AutoCAD or Revit and upload directly to your tablet to bring to the field. Layout five times faster than traditional methods using TopCon Robotic Total Station. And when possible, install pre-pour to save even more on installation cost. During layout, the system automatically records as-built information, proving items are positioned within specifications and reducing costly rework. After the layout is complete, update the drawings back in the office with the as-built information on any items that needed to be moved during the construction process. Bottom line, use TopCon's complete layout solution to eliminate having to dimension drawings, layout five times faster, reduce costs, eliminate rework, and allow yourself to build faster and improve your cash flow.
All right, folks. I'll get back to my screen over here. All right, so what is Point Manager? So Point Manager is a software that was designed with the CAD user in mind. This is to be used as a BIM tool. This will help streamline workflow from field to office in horizontal and vertical applications. Point Manager is a plugin for Revit and AutoCAD, providing intuitive point creation, creates an automated approach to creating layout files with easy import and export to and from layout devices. It improves office to field workflow, increases efficiency and accuracy. Some key features. So, hey, Vinny, yes. sorry to stop you there. Uh, we're not seeing your screen yet. Can you uh, share your screen again? Yes. Thanks. All right. Perfect, thank you. Got the screen on. All right, folks. Um, thank you, Jim. So um, let's go right here. So key features in Point Manager. So with Point Manager, we can create uh, high volume point creations. We could create hundreds to thousands of points within minutes. Uh, point files and background drawings can be exported to your layout device. Coordinate systems can be added that match your job site. Point Manager can also import field measurements, generate point reports, generate deviation reports, and create profiles and surfaces. And Point Manager works in AutoCAD, Revit, and also works in AutoCAD Lite. So take you through the workflow here real quick. So the idea is first we're going to create the points using Point Manager in AutoCAD or in Revit. We'll open up our AutoCAD or our Revit program directly from the Point Manager software itself. After that, we'll wirelessly send points to the field for easy layout using Magnet Enterprise Cloud Transfer. Layout points with adjustments to as-built conditions and run deviation reports. And then send that completed layout file to update the building model to match as-built conditions. All right, so let's take a look at our point manager here. So when you open point manager, this is the home screen that you'll see. This little uh, icon is the point manager icon. You'll see this on your desktop. And when you open it up, <clears throat> place I'd highly recommend you start is right here in under the under the start section. This is where you're going to open to prepare points in CAD. Here's where you'll open to prepare points in Revit. We have an online help library. We have a PDF user's manual that's got tutorials and uh, practice files for all of the different point manager workflows. <clears throat> Under settings, we have a code library right here. Any of these codes you can use to help uh, describe your points. And then this is where you're gonna to wanna to go when you first open the program, right down here under settings, uh, general settings. And under here, we've got uh, general settings. You could default to whichever language you choose, company information, units, format, your display, uh, different folder locations. And then here is where you're gonna put in default path for your AutoCAD and the default path for your Revit. So this you'll have to actually select and find that, find that uh, program that you wanna use and import it right in here. All right, so let's look at some points. So this will open up our CAD. And once we get our CAD open, here we go. So when you download the point manager, it will actually install it right into your uh, ribbon in AutoCAD and in Revit. So I'm gonna open up the point manager ribbon here. So pretty simplified ribbon. Uh, over here, we've got settings. I click open settings. First thing I wanna check is, are my drawing units set the way I want them? I'm gonna change these to international feet. You can see we've got some options in there. And over here under group, 
what we're going to do is we'll create groups of points for different points to keep things organized. Uh, update drawing. Each time you make changes, you'll go ahead and click update drawing. Here's where you can actually edit your points. Uh, editing points takes you through a bunch of different menus. Here's where you can select the type of point that you want to use. And in the, and here we've got an option. You could have annotation with the point ID and the code, point ID, the code and the height, symbol size and text height, location of the annotation in relationship to the point, uh, where you could create groups. Uh, let's see, next we've got, here's where you're gonna import, import points uh, from Magnet Field Enterprise. Uh, you'll basically take the points that are in Magnet Field Enterprise, copy them to a file, uh, open them up, open that file up from the clipboard and insert those points back into your AutoCAD. Here's where you can insert individual points. And here we've got where we could insert points over blocks, got points over lines, polyphase meshes, uh, circles or points, define our coordinate systems, run deviation reports, and export. So pretty straightforward on our choices right there. I like that ribbon, it's not very complicated. So I've got a file here that um, it's kind of nice because it provides a few different uh, Autodesk objects. So here, AutoCAD objects. So here we've got polyface mesh, we've got individual lines, and we've got blocks. So I'm gonna start with inserting points over blocks. Now, the first thing it wants me to do is select a block so it knows where we're going. And as soon as I select one block, then I will go ahead and select the entire drawing. So it'll look for all of those blocks. And then I'll hit enter. It takes me right to the to our little wizard. This wizard is just a fabulous little tool. It's telling me that I've got these square columns. And right here, I'm going to start with numbers in the 1000 series. Here are all the blocks in the model. and this right here, the square columns are the ones that we've selected. And you can see it's checked. You could add or uh, remove any blocks in that screen. We'll create a new group. We'll call this columns. And this group will show up uh, later on when we look at our reports. And then here's where we get to choose our symbol type. I'm just gonna go with this default symbol type. And I'll leave our symbol size at six units. And we'll take a look at the size of that in the drawing. And I will uh, give these point description, uh, the annotation COL for column, and it can be located in the top quadrant over here. Now this here is how you're going to route your points. So depending on where you wanna start your points from and how you want them routed through your model, you could choose any orientation, and I'm just going to click none right here. This will just place them in um, order by the way the blocks were actually created. And here are all my points, total of 12 points. I've got my X, I've got my Y coordinate, and I've got my Z coordinate. And finish. And this is where we come to update our drawing. And there's our points, pretty quick, pretty quick. So those points basically are located at the insertion point of this block. Uh, you can change the location of that insertion point depending on uh, where you want that uh, point to be placed. All right, so let's place a few more points. So we've got our columns located. Uh, next, we'll place points over lines. Actually, we'll go polyface mesh. I like doing the foundations next. So here I'll select polyface mesh. And I'll select the entire model. And it'll take us into the wizard. And here it's going to look on the layer for structural foundation. And we'll start out this series uh, in the 2000 series. 
we've got 142 points on the structural foundation layer. Now we're gonna, what I'm gonna do here is um, we're gonna change it so that we're not gonna have that many points. Um, this next screen basically is asking us where we want our points. So if we've got radiuses, arcs or circles, we can say we want center points, um, or we could use just vertices. In this case, we're gonna use only vertices because we've got uh, you know, just square edges throughout. And I'll hit next. This group we're gonna call foundations. And we'll add that to the group. And here, I'm gonna change my symbol size because there'll be a lot of them. And three is a pretty good size. And I'll call this S, F, and D, structural foundation. And I'm gonna orient them on this side of the point. I'll go to next. And here is how we're gonna route them. And now, so I happen to know that it's gonna look at points at all of these elevations. What I wanna do is I'm gonna remove these two. These are the upper elevations. These are the bottom uh, elevations of my structural foundation points. So it'll just kind of make it a little bit easier uh, to, to view them. So in here you can select, you know, whichever elevations that you choose. We'll go to next. So we got a total of 110 points at this point. And we can see we've got our X, our Y, and our Z, uh, mostly uh, negative 12 and negative 10 and finish. And then we go to update drawing. So each time we go through that process, click on update drawing, and there you go. So we've got points for our structural foundation at, at the bottom. And I know in, this is kind of hard to decipher in 3D. Oh, sorry about that. Let's take a look here. So you can see it's actually placing quite a few of these. My model just decided to, there we go. So let's take a look at our top view. Not here. So if I look straight down at the top view, I could see where all these are located. Sometimes looking at them in 3D is a little bit, uh, it takes a little bit of practice. And it will, what you'll notice is we've got uh, different sized text. So my columns are a little bit larger. We can make them any size you want. And then you can come in here and click on these if they're pretty much directly on top of each other and move them around, or just use really small text. You know, maybe like a two point or a, or a one point. And you can see that leader line stays attached to the point. And this is just showing us, I'm just basically showing us how to kind of clean that up a little bit. All right, so there are the points for our structural foundation. And now let's add points to our uh, line work. So this is basically a uh, flat work over here. Uh, we're gonna use the footpath for that. So I'm gonna come back to placing points over lines and I'll select a line. And then for select objects, I'll select the entire model. I'll hit enter, opens up the wizard. It's selecting lines from the line layer. Now here are our locations. So if we're in a 2D drawing and we wanna select say the center points of grids, we could choose here. I'm in a 3D CAD drawing and I'm just gonna choose vertices. So click here and we'll change the series to 3000. And we've got a total of four lines. And this group I'm going to call uh, footpath. And next, and again, we could change the size here. If we want, we could change our, uh, our symbol if we like. I'll just go with the default. We could change the location of where they're oriented. And here we'll just call this footpath one. And next, and we'll just default to that. So we've got a total of six points. And finish, update our drawing, there's our points. Pretty slick.
So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to send these points out to Jim, who's in the field, who's just, he's been sitting, waiting out there in the field for quite a while, and uh, he's finished with his coffee, he's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and export these points and background file. So what this will do is it wants me to select background file. So it's telling me it's created the background file and now it's exporting all the points. So now it opens up the point manager again and it's going to show me all the points that are in the model under each one of these uh, different uh, groups that we created. So here's our footpath group, foundations group, columns. So this is our list view. We've got our X, Y, and Z coordinate. And then if I look at this in graphic view, we can see the actual uh, points themselves. And it's always a good idea to take a quick measurement. So we've got measure tools right here. And let's just test this for accuracy. I'm just gonna click on the location of both of these points. And it's saying I've got a distance of 20 units. I happen to know that that's correct. I could inquire again, or I could double check. All right, so that's all looking good. All right, so now, right up here, I'm gonna export these points to my magnet file. So we'll click columns, we'll take our foundations and our footpath, and we'll hit next. And this one here, I'm gonna call point groups one. And here's where you check to include your background file. So you'll see this on your uh, layout device in the field. And we'll export that to our project folder. And I'll come to a project folder Here we go. And here's where I'll just paste them right in. Got my point groups one right there. And next I'm gonna take these and upload these to my magnet. Here we go. So here's our, um, our magnet. Here's the demo that we're working in. And I'm going to upload files right from here, browse from disk, and they happen to be right there. And you could drag and drop these or just open these up from, uh, from the folder and upload files. Now this generally takes a minute, two minutes, um, depending on how many data points you've got. So, and look at that, it's moving along pretty quick. So. We got the DWG in there. Okay, and it's it will always tell us that it's either importing and it'll tell us this way what it'll let us know when we're done. And now Jim's actually in um, uh, Magnet Enterprise on his end. And once these are fully imported, they'll appear on his end in his folder. So right in here in Magnet Enterprise. Uh, we've got a lot of different options. Under projects, we've created this folder, uh, point manager demo, and we've got a couple of users in here. I've got myself and Jim. So here's where I'm sending uh, these files to. And what this process is doing, and not only is it importing them into, um, uh, into the screen, but it's also importing them into, um, into Magnet. That's part of the reason why it's taking uh, a little bit of time. All right, are you seeing anything on your end, Jim? Almost there. All right. Almost there, it's still importing there. And that's the that's kind of the error checking that's going on, that it's it likes to, Magnet Enterprise is more than just a cloud software or cloud transfer software. It really does a lot of uh, uh, data verification and looking at the data to make sure it's good and clean. And so the import process itself takes a little bit of time and it won't let you download it until it's done importing it into the Magnet Enterprise project. So uh, looks like it's just about done there. Why don't we uh, switch over to me being a presenter and then I'll open up my magnets. Um, there's, it's done. 
open up my magnet field layout and bring it in. So uh, let me switch to the right screen here. All right, Vinny, I'm assuming you guys can see my screen. Yes. Yep. Perfect. All right. So now I'm the field guy. I just got done having my uh, Dunkin' Donuts. I'm ready to start working. So I open up my magnet field layout and I've got an internet connection on my FC 5000 or 6000 and it's automatically connected into magnet enterprise because that's part of the settings I have in my software. So I'm just going to go into enterprise and I've created a, um, a project to work on today. So I go under job under enterprise and it's logged me into my folder and it's showing me uh, the data files that are in there. So I'm going to bring down this uh, DWG file. And the first thing it says, do you want to bring this file into the current job? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. I'm just going to next through all these. It's asking me some of my settings. Yes, I want all the lines and all the layers. Uh, this is where I could say, no, maybe I don't want all the layers, but I'm going to take them all. And it tells me I'm done. Now I'm going to do that again because I need the MXL file. There it is. I'm going to hit download. Now it asks me, do you want to bring that file into the current job? As a matter of fact, I do. So again, there's points and codes and layers with that MXL file. I can turn some on and off, but I want to bring them all in. Brings those all in, tells me what came in. We got 128 points. So let me close out of here and let's just see how they all came in. I'll go right into my plan view. There it is. Here's all the points that Vinny created, all the ones that he is telling me to get done today, which is a lot because that's a lot for me to do in one day. But let me just check and see what it looks like in 3D view. Yep, it's exactly what Vinny was working off of. So I can work in 3D mode, but I usually like to work in 2D. So we'll switch back over here. Now I noticed he sent me the job and the surveyors going, came by and said, hey, I gave you five foot offsets on those two columns. Uh, they're on the southwest and southeast ones. You just have five foot straight south of each of those. Well, I don't have the points in here, so I need to create them. So I'm going to zoom into this column line. I'm going to click on it to highlight that column point, and then I'll right click. And for an FC 5000 or 6000, that's just pressing and holding, is the same as right clicking. And I'm going to create a point and direction. I want to go straight south, 180 degrees. I want to go five feet. And let's calc it. Let's take a look. Yep, started at 1,000 straight south. That looks right. Let's store it. Okay, let me do that again for the other column line. Back over here. Highlight that column. Right click. Create point and direction. Again, I want to go 180. And I'm going to go five feet. See if I did that right. Yep, that looks good. Let me store that one. Now I've got my two offset points. So these are my control points I'm going to set up on for the day. So let's get my setup done. I'm going to close out, go to setup, set up over points. It's connecting up to my robot automatically because it knows if I want to set up, I better connect to the robot. So what point is my Occupy point? Let's look at the map. I'm gonna start right there. What point is my backside point? I'm gonna slide over here. I'm gonna go next. I'm gonna take a shot. And now I have set everything up. I'm ready to start laying out. So now let's go, I like to lay out from the plan view because I just like to see it from there. I wanna start out laying out the uh, Let's start out this foundation corner right here. So I'm going to highlight that one. Again, right click and go to layout. Now this is in our layout mode. This right here is our plan view. So kind of the screen we just had. This little circle is our compass. Now let me get connected to my robot and get locked in. So if I had a GT or a LN150 or a uh, even some of the older instruments, um, this would connect me right in. So now it knows where I am, and being that we're in simulation, I'm gonna fake it and walk all the way over here. This little compass is telling me where I need to go in relation to me and the instrument. 
So it's saying I have to walk towards the instrument two feet, four inches and nine sixteenths, and to my right, one foot, one inch and 11 sixteenths. I have the same data being displayed down here. So it's telling me everything I need to do to get to the point. But I've also just got a nice graphical display. This is me, I gotta get there. So I'm gonna walk a little closer. It's telling me, hey, towards six inches and to my right, four inches. And again, that is me standing here facing the instrument. Let me get a little closer. And it gave me a little noise saying, hey, you're getting pretty close. And I'm gonna get right on top of it because I am that perfect. Now it's all green. It's telling me I've gotten within tolerance. In fact, not only in tolerance, I am dead on because that's how I roll. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this shot so I can prove that I've done it. This is storing the as-built data. And so I usually like to just leave all the default information in there, but you could change the information on this point. But let me show you what it looks like when I save it. Now, it's kind of tough to see because the orientation, but there is a, uh, let me move my simulator out. This little flag says that I have actually staked out this point and it has stored another point that is the point number I was, I was um, staking underscore STK. So I now that these know that these two points are related. Now it automatically incremented to the next point. It's telling me, hey, you got to back up a foot and go to uh, my right four inches. Let's see, where did it take me? Over to this point. Excuse me, I didn't say back up. I'm, I said back up. I meant go forward. So let me start walking over to this one. I'm getting a little closer. Now I'm within tolerance, but I'm not quite dead on. And you can set your tolerance of when this little thing turns green and when the instrument or when the uh, target turns green. Um, so I'm going to get a little closer because the boss is walking, watching. So I'm going to get dead on. Got there. I'm going to store. Automatically increment to the next one. It's walking me to this next point. Let's walk over there. Uh, I'm close. Boss isn't watch, watching. I'm going to go ahead and take that one. Increment to my next point. Let's just move over. Uh, pretty close with intolerance. I'm going to store it. All right, now it's getting close to my afternoon coffee break. So I'm going to just get kind of close. I'm going to store it. He goes, hey, you're not really within tolerance. Are you sure you want to store this point? As I look around, I don't see the boss. Yep, let's get it. Walk back over to, uh, now it incremented me to the next available point, but I really want to lay out this one. So I'm at 2076. Let me back up here to 2068. There we go. Let me walk over. Uh-oh, the boss is getting closer. Let me get right on. Move my uh, screen over here. Let me get even closer. Okay, store this one. And one more shot. He's really watching me on this one. So let me store it. So now I've taken all my shots. I'm ready to go on my coffee break. Oh, I got one more. Sorry about that. Let me uh, walk myself right over here. There we go. Quarter by quarter, I'm good with that. All right, so I'm ready to send this as-built data back to Vinny so I can prove what a great job I did. So uh, I could go around and finish taking all of them before, before I send them or send them on certain intervals. Usually you do it at the end of the day. So I'm gonna close out of my staking screen, get back to my home screen. I'm gonna export these points out. So I'm going to export points. I'm going to send just a straight text file. It's easy enough for Vinny to work with. But I want to use some filters because I don't want to send him all the points. That would be all the points he already created. I just want to send him the points that I collected when I did my stakeout. So I'm going to do next. I'm going to filter by point types. I'm going to do just my layout points. And then I'm going to create... Um, this file just called Point Manager Webinar. Actually, since this is today's date, I want to make sure that he knows I did this today. And then this is the uh, format for the text file, comma. I don't need to put a header in the first row. 
It's going to be my name, an X, Y elevation and code. Hit next. All eight that I did today. Hopefully he doesn't notice I only did eight points. And then uh, close this one. So now I've created that file. Now I'm going to send it to Enterprise where Vinny can take it. So in here, I'm going to upload a file. And then I want to see all my files. And here's my point manager webinar file that I did. Highlight that one, green check, and then upload. It's thinking about it, uploading, all done. This point, I can head back to Dunkin' Donuts and get my morning coffee break, and uh, Vinny's can take it from here and overlay all this stuff right on the model to see how good of a job I did for the day. So Vinny, I'm going to pass this back to you. Thank you, Jim. All right. So now I take a look at my screen in Magnet, and here I could see, oh, look at that, uh, point groups that I sent Jim, and then Jim sent me this file. Well, wow, look at that. Let's take a look. So first thing I'm going to do is click on that and download that file. And it'll download it as a text file. And now I'm going to go right over back to my point manager. Uh, here we go. And here I'm going to import points from file. So I'm going to import the text files that Jim sent. And here I'm going to browse, go back to my folder and look at that point manager webinar. 52721, that's today's date. I'll grab those points. And I'll import them into the point manager. So now it imports these in a new uh, in a new field. Okay, so these are all the points that Jim sent over. So I can import all of these points. And in this case, I'm going to just grab a few rather than um, cloud up the drawing with, with too many points. So he had a few that were really close, and I want to highlight those. So point 2073 and 74. I'm going to just import these two guys, and we'll take a look. I know some of these other points were, were good, and I can import all of these. The way to do that is to you know, just uh, do a highlight and select all of these points. And I'm going to copy these to basically copy them to the clipboard. And now I'm going to come back to my CAD. And now that I'm in CAD, I am going to paste these in from my clipboard. And I've got these two points. And again, folks, I'm just bringing in these two um, just because they're, uh, we know that they're off and it'll be a little bit easier to identify this. And I'll call this a new group. This will be a field points and I'm going to make these a little bit smaller text and next and next and finish all right and then we'll go and update our drawing. And let's take a look. So as you can see, we've got a lot of points to sift through. So I'm going to come over here to my layers and I'm going to turn off, let's see, I'm going to turn off my columns. I've got my field points right here, my footpath, I'll turn that off and foundations, I'll turn off foundations. And I'm just gonna look for these points. Uh, here they are. So these are the points that uh, I received from Jim. And you can see that these are the staked points. And if I zoom in, I can see that, yeah, they're pretty darn close. And I'm gonna run a deviation report, to see if these points are within tolerance. And just as an example, I'll come back and turn on my uh, foundation points. And here are all my structural foundation points. So you can see 
uh, at this point, it's a, it's a little bit of an exercise and kind of moving points if you want to see them all. And you could just you know click on the text and move some of these. And you can see by using smaller text for different ones uh, certainly helps identify. All right. So at this point, we're going to run the deviation report. I could see I've got a couple of points here and a couple of points here, points that were shot in the field and points that I actually placed on my CAD drawing. And it looks like there's little deviation. So we'll go to export background file and deviation report. So it wants me to select objects. Actually, we did this already. Hold, hold the horses, folks. Okay, deviation reports. So here's where we're going to check our deviation. And I am going to check our field points. Actually, we're not going to check the new points. We're going to check our foundations. And next. And let's see. Uh, here's where we're going to select our tolerance. So I'm going to make this a tolerance of five hundredths because I want these to make sure these points are nice and tight. So there's our X, Y, and our Z tolerance. Next, next. So here's the points that we're going to check. If you want to preview your deviation report, you could select right here and preview it. I'm going to run this whole thing. And let's see, there's my text height. And right here is my uh, cloud size. So it's going to give me a cloud. And I could make this symbol larger or smaller. I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller here. I'll write a little more data about our points. There we go. And update our drawing. And here we go. So these two clouded areas are the two points that came in just a little bit out of tolerance. And now let's take a look at our report. Let's see, I want to turn on my other layer and turn on my foundations layer. Actually, yep, these are the field points that we placed and we'll turn on our foundations. Uh, and let's take a look at our deviation report. And we'll click right here on preview. So here's the what you'll see in your deviation report. So to give you a graphical example, and then right down here, it's going to explain to us. And Jim could chime in here to kind of take us through a little bit more uh, specifically what we're looking at. Yeah, this thing's basically giving you how far out of tolerance you are based on the units of the drawing. So this particular drawing is in inches. Now, if anyone noticed, I was working in feet and inches. So it, it worked back and forth just fine. So uh, uh, this is in decimal inches. And, and so I was a little bit, you know, based on what tolerance we set, whether it would tell me I'm intolerance or out of tolerance. Um, but it's just a nice graphical thing that you could email off to somebody and, and uh, um, save. You could have your entire list of all the points, uh, all based on uh, your design points. So I think that's pretty much it in uh, yeah. Point Manager. Vinny, we got anything else we uh, we want to show? We got a little bit more of our uh, presentation to go through, but I think that's pretty much walking you through uh, all the steps, going from taking the CAD drawing, creating points for the uh, for the uh, layout person to use, sending them up to Enterprise, and then pulling them down from Enterprise, doing the layout, collecting all your as-built information, sending it back up, and and generating a deviation report. Um, here's one other thing we could take a peek at. Let's uh, look at editing our points uh, while we're here. So I want to clean these up a little bit. We've got to, I'll turn off my layers. So one thing you do get is, so these are the layers that we created. Uh, so you could come in here and turn these layers on and off uh, as need be to kind of clean up your, you know, clean up uh, your, your visual. And now, um, so this is the identifier that I've got, columns. If I come into edit points, now suppose for some reason I wanted to just see, I'm going to edit my point groups here. And suppose I wanted to see some of my values. Um, 
let's see, code description for this is call. And we'll leave it set like that. Next, oh wait, that's what I wanted to show us right here. Um, so here, suppose I wanted to say, have my point ID, my code and my height or my coordinates. I could turn this information on right here on the points. Finish, update drawing. And now here's, there's my Z location and my column. Uh, now say I wanted to, you know, see my coordinates. I could go back in and you could do this all at the same time, but I've got uh, point ID and coordinates, point ID, coordinates and height. Let's take a look at that. And we'll update. There we go. So there's a lot more data in there, but it's basically giving us all the X, Y, and Z data of that point if you wanted to visually you know, look at it. And you could see it's a little bit superimposed on top of one another. So we could just move some of this out the way. Once again, just kind of, there's a lot more to this than we could show you guys in, in an hour. Um, and one other thing we do have some time for, I did want to show folks what this looks like in Revit. I've got a file that I created in Revit. And if you will bear with me, Anyway, so here are our points in our, you know, with our coordinates. Um, so I'm gonna give my cat a break and I wanna open up, uh, let's see. This might take just a sec. And I'm not gonna create points in Revit, but I have a file that already has points in Revit. And I just wanna show you uh, an illustration of what you'll see when you're working in Revit, where the points are located. And uh, the thing about using points in Revit is you actually have to turn on your labels and tags to see the, uh, the annotations for your points. All right, so let's see here. Open this up. Let's take a look at this guy. Uh, let's see. Well, let's go back one more. Uh, in there. All right, well, let's just open this guy. I think this one has the points in it. All right. And this doesn't, well, let's take a look at, let me open up the other model. Here it is. All right, so Revit doesn't want to go that way. So let's just go ahead, still have a couple minutes. Let's get some points in here. So when you go into Revit, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click on settings. So under the point manager, You'll say everything's grayed out, right, to start with. If I start with clicking on settings and go ahead and I'm just gonna select feet and fractional inches. Here's my uh, symbol type and my symbol size and I'll hit okay. There we go. And now here I'm gonna come in and say I wanna create points either over geometry or over families. So if I select over families and it wants me to select an element, there we go. This is what your points are gonna look like. This is what I basically wanted to show everybody. You're gonna see these little points And here's where I could come in and place, I could individually place these points. 
on this particular family and load the family back into the project. All right, I guess I don't have a whole lot more to show you guys with Revit at this point. Yeah, the nice thing about point manager in both Revit and AutoCAD is is you're just creating points and and you're the whole concept is you're designing the layout process for your field guys rather than them having to pull up a data file and choose what points they want to lay out that day. It's different point management and um, uh, the software is almost almost identical in both Revit and AutoCAD. So it's a it's it's easy to flip back and forth and kind of work from one to the other. Yeah, and my my Revit is not uh, where it needs to be right now. But anyway, folks, um, any questions? Uh, if you guys want to, I did want to leave some time for questions at the end of our presentation here. Yeah, Diana, we have any questions in the uh, question pane? So we do have a few. Um, one question from earlier on in the presentation, how far back of version in Revit will TopCon Point Manager work? Revit 2019? Ooh, that's a great question. Uh, I don't have that answer, and um, but I can find out. If uh, find out who asked that question, I'll be happy to email them the answer as soon as I can get it from Caesar, our, our uh, project product manager. Yes, and we have um, that individual's information, so we will get back to you as soon as we can. Okay. Um, a next question being, are you able to apply codes to the points to use in magnet field layout? Absolutely, yep. And, uh, and that was, you know, all those points that he created were attached to the codes, and then they can be associated with the uh, code library. So when you bring the data file into magnet field layout, if you use the appropriate code library, it will see those codes and then and then put them on the uh, or use the proper symbols, use the proper colors. So you want to see uh, uh, bangets or hangers with different sizes and you've got them color coded appropriately. You could absolutely do that. So when you create the, the points in um, point manager, and then code them appropriately, they'll match that field code library and magnet field layout. Great, thank you. Another question is, does the TopCon point manager work with ITMs or fabrication parts? Nathan, you would ask that question, wouldn't you? Um, honestly, it's another one I don't know the answer to, but I'll find out. It's primarily blocks and families, but uh, uh, I will find out the answer to that question and get back in touch with you. I know where to find you, Nathan. <laughs> okay, and then moving on, what kind of deviation report can we export? So if if we're talking magnet field layout, we didn't go into that, but there is a whole deviation report in magnet field layout. So you have a couple options for doing deviation reports. One is in magnet field layout where I could have created as the guy in the field before I'm going to get my, my Dunkin' Donuts, I could have created a deviation report and then sent that up to um, Magnet Enterprise. And it is either an HTML or a PDF report, either one of those. Um, and then in um, Point Manager, I'm pretty sure it's basically a text file. Um, it's just a text report that, that uh, you can spit out from there. Is that what you're looking for, Scott? If not, text me, you know how to find me. And he said yes, so thanks for um, that answer there, Jim. Awesome. Well, thank well, you great. all very much. We do appreciate everybody attending this webinar. Um, if you got any questions at all, you can uh, email us at uh, really just at info at topconsolutions.com. I am Jim Martin at topcon.com. Uh, Vinny, you're a uh, uh, Vista Motto at uh, TopConSolutions.com. Uh, any of those questions, we'd be happy to answer, and I'll follow up on some of those other ones and uh, email back to people that ask them. Vinny, you got anything else before we uh, head out? 
Well, I just want to say thank you everybody for your time today and for your attention. And we really appreciate being able to showcase this product and yeah, reach out to us with any questions or concerns. And as you start implementing this in the field, uh, we're also available for field support to help you guys get this uh, up and running. So yeah, thanks uh, so much everybody.